This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. A local historian takes us back to when John F. Kennedy visited the Hazleton area next. Hello everyone, it's Patriot Day, a day to remember the events of September 11, 2001. I'm Ken Karen. here's your local information from SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. High school football is back in the area on Friday night. Here's the schedule. The Hazleton area Cougars begin the Dennis Bookman era on the road at rival Crestwood. Stan DeCosti makes his return as Marion's head football coach at home against Jim Thorpe. Tamaqua area is coming off their deep run in the state playoffs and they open up at Shenandoah Valley and North Schuylkill pays a visit to the Monoy area Golden Bears. The standard speaker will have you covered with game recaps this weekend. I spent part of my childhood in Calares, not too far away from Kennedy Drive in McAdoo, so I grew up hearing all about John F. Kennedy visiting that street from a number of my relatives. He also made another stop in our area, and here to tell us all about that visit is our Janine Lassant and local historian Charles McElwee. You know, Hazleton is really a hot spot for the political game, and a lot of Past presidents, former presidents, and actually those running for office have visited Luzerne County, specifically Hazleton. That's true. And one president who came to the area 60 years ago was John F. Kennedy. In the days before the election, he campaigned at downtown Hazleton, and that was a tribute to how important Hazleton, southern Luzerne County, and of course, northeastern Pennsylvania was to Kennedy's victory over Richard Nixon, who at that point was vice president under Eisenhower in his second term. So in the days before the election, late October, it was a crisp autumn day, Kennedy spoke in front of the Altamont Hotel before a crowd of over 12,000 people. Now the question is, why did he pick Hazleton? And the answer was simple for that time. It had a bounty of Catholic voters who voted Democrat. They were loyal to the Democratic Party. They were inspired that Kennedy, Kennedy would have become the first Catholic president of the United States. And many of those people who were in that crowd that day remember the 1928 election when Al Smith ran for president, and he would have been the first Catholic president. But people like my grandfather, for example, my father always told me the story that he and his father Went, went out to look out to the valley and there were burning crosses in the valley to protest Al Smith's candidacy in 1928. So people re had that memory ingrained, that anti-Catholicism. And in places like Hazleton, they were going to the, the voting booth. Like my father and his father, he, he brought my father in and he said, you're going to pull the lever for the first Catholic, Irish Catholic president. And, and so many people did. And of course, Kennedy won. So um, yeah, it's fascinating that Hazleton, yeah, we, we think Luzerne County is so important now, but it has always been a crucial bellwether for presidential politics. Why do you think that is? It's cultural and demographic. I think Luzerne in many ways is a microcosm of the country, but that, that, has transitioned over time. So in 1960, Luzerne County was important because it had Catholic voters who were cu culturally connected to Kennedy's candidacy. They just had to vote for him. Fast forward 60 years later, the des descendants of those voters actually feel culturally betrayed by the Democratic Party. They no longer have this nostalgia for the Kennedy aura. We saw that recently when Joe Kennedy III lost a primary against uh, Ed Markey for a Senate seat in Massachusetts, the first time that Kennedy has lost Massachusetts. In other words, the Kennedy mystique is over. And I think that applies to Luzerne County too. You're not hearing people say they're voting for Joe Biden because he'll be the second Catholic president. Catholicism is playing no role. These are voters who are going to Trump, who are Catholic and oftentimes Democrat, but the Democratic Party no longer speaks to their concerns, and therefore they came in huge numbers to Trump in 2016, and we'll see that encore performance for Trump in Luzerne County in November. Interestingly enough, when we look at how the values of both parties have, have changed and almost kind of flip-flopped since that time with the Democratic, uh, why people are vote Democrat and why they, they vote Republican. 
absolutely. We're, we're seeing a realignment of the, the political map. So places that were historically Democratic, like Northeastern Pennsylvania, now vote Republican. And then places that were reliably Republican, like suburban Philadelphia, now go, that's Joe Biden's protectorate. That's where he's counting on the margins to play in his favor. And this has been, this is a phenomenon that's fairly recent. I mean, people forget Luzerne County voted for Obama twice. They did not really go toward the Republican Party until recently. In fact, look at 2019. I mean, it, was un- it would have been unthinkable a decade ago that the courthouse would flip to Republican. And we also see that with State Senator John Udichak, who is now an independent, no longer ca- caucuses with the Democratic Party. And I think we're going to see more of that shift in the years ahead. Very good. Always nice to have you on, Charlie, to talk about what has happened at the history of the Hazleton area. Great talking to you. Thank you. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. As football and other local sports begin, here's our weekend forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 52 degrees. Saturday is partly sunny with a high of 69. Saturday night, a 40% chance of showers mainly after 2 a.m., mostly cloudy with a low of 57. Sunday, showers are likely mainly after 2 p.m., a 60% chance of precipitation, cloudy with a high of 73. At night, showers likely mainly before 8 p.m., mostly cloudy with a low of 58 degrees. The chance of precipitation is 60%. Monday, mostly sunny with a high of 71. Monday night mostly clear with a low of 47. Tuesday is sunny with a high of 68. And Tuesday night mostly clear with a low of 46 degrees. Spotted lanternflies have reached Hazleton. Rick McCoola, the butterfly guy and guest on Outdoor Exploring, spotted them on Tuesday, September 8th, right against his mailbox of his home in the Hazleton Heights. He later saw one at a gas station, and his wife saw a few the same day. For those of you who see them, kill them on sight. They're a pest that shouldn't be in Pennsylvania. They threaten grapevines and other fruit trees. You'll recognize spotted lanternflies by their two sets of wings. Both have dark brown or black spots on them. The front wings are light tan, while the back wings are red. They look kind of attractive, but the problem comes when they congregate. They kill the trees by eating leaves. They also excrete a sticky sap that attracts other pests. Homeowners don't want them anywhere near their decks and outdoor patios either. If you uh, see them uh, on your cars or other recreational equipment, trailers, campers, please scrape them off or destroy them before leaving our area and going into a place north of us that doesn't have the spotted lantern fly. This September and the rest of the fall and winter, you'll see their egg masses on trees. They look like brown mud, but as they harden, they lighten to a gray or white. You can scrape these into a baggie containing alcohol and that will kill the larva. You know what will really get you pumped up for Football Friday? Our local sports show and tell segment with Ron Marchetti coming up in just a little bit. Next, the shows are going on safely at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Janine Lassand has that story. And tonight in the SSP TV Spotlight, it's been very popular in 2020 with people staying at home. The Mass for Inspiration. 